Hello, and this is chapter 7. This chapter will show some tutorials for basic Rust programming. First, we'll learn what you must know before programming. Now, we know that there are three kinds of communication in the Rust. First is the topic communication. Second is the service communication. And the third is the action communication. And what we are going to make in this chapter are the package for topic and the service communication. Because the action is not often used, then we'll learn how to use the parameter and the ROS launch. Things to know before programming the ROS. We learned that the communication in the ROS can be taken by following the communication protocol of ROS, and that's called message. This time, Let's image that if the two nodes are using the same message, but they sense or receives the value in different units. When you buy a laser scanner and you are going to port it to your program, what if your program receives the data in meter units, but the sensor sends the data in centimeter? Then you will be very disappointed of what you bought. But don't worry. They mix the products as meet the standard unit, and so should you do in ROS programming. Some of these are very known, but you should know what I'm going to talk. The axis in ROS follows right hand row, which means that make the fist with your right hand and spread the thumb. Your thumb will direct to one of the axes, then the other fingers will direct the direction of the rotation. Unless you understand this rule, your robot will run very weird. The programming rules show how you should code the program. This makes the other programmers easily understand your code. We have already had a look into the ROS message communication, and its structure could be drawn like this. Topic was a simplex communication and be ended until the network between the nodes are disconnected. Service was a duplex communication, but this runs only once in single one. And the action can be regarded as a mix of the topic and service communication. This is often used for long time work. The parameter is an editable variable in ROS. If it changes the value, the value will be saved into the ROS master, so you don't need to terminate and restart the node for applying new parameter values. Now let's write the code. As I mentioned, we'll make the nodes of topic communication and the nodes of service communication. Here starts with the topic communication. Before testing the node communication, or making the sources of the nodes. We should make the package. The ROS packages can be usable when it locates in the source folder of ROS workspace. The Kekin workspace is a temporary name. You can set the folder as a workspace by using Kekin init workspace command. Now the Kekin WS is a workspace that we are going to use. So let's make the ROS package here. The words following after the Kekin create package command is the name of the package and the name of dependent packages. We'll dig further of the dependent packages, so let's skip describing. If you made the package, go into the folder by using cd and put ls. So now you can see what kind of files are made by itself. There are four files or folders on the list, and these are very important elements for package settings. We'll learn about all of them step by step. The package XML is the file which tells us about what is this package for, who made this package, where can we get this package, where can we ask about this package, who and how can we use this package. And also, this describes what kind of package might be needed, so the user can prepare the packages before running this package. You can see inside the package XML file 
by a following command. You should override the following to what is already written in. Put this under what you've copied and pasted. And here is another important element, the CMakeList text file. Kicking Make's system builds the sources in the package by following the description in the CMakeList test file. The inside sets version of the CMake needed, package name, other dependent packages that are needed to build the package, message file needed. What kind of message will help making another type of messages here? Include directories, adding contents for making executable nodes. There are two nodes that should be programmed in this tutorial. The topic publisher CPP file for topic publisher node and the topic subscriber CPP file for topic subscriber node. And here is how to create the message file. We already have some message types which are very standard in the raw system. But if you want to use another types of message, you can borrow the format of raw standardized messages. To make your message usable, you should put the line up above into the CMake list. And you should make the folder for messages and make fill the message file. G edit the message tutorial message file and fill the following into. Those time and integer 32 bits are all the standardized format in ROS. You can see more different types of standardized messages in the ROS wiki. Here describes how to make the CPP file executable in ROS. Every sources for a ROS node should be located in the source folder in the package. Run gedit and fill the following in. After you paste it, you can go to the next step. But let's have a look on the sources line by line. To make a source as ROS executable file, or so-called ROS node, the source code should include the ROS header. It has APIs for the ROS communication. Next, we include the message that we made. If you use another message type, you can include even more. When we go to into the main function, here it comes with ROS initialization. This sets the node's name. And we get the node handler for ROS communication. The next comes with ROS publisher declaration. This line saves the message type, topic name, the buffer size of what we are going to publish into the class instance. And here is a loop rate. The topic communication sends and receives the messages continuously. And to do so, the loop rate should be set. Next line gets a message storage and we'll put the values into here. Now this part will run over and over until the node is terminated. We defined the message tutorial type message in the previous step and it has a variable stem and data. Now the stem variable will get the time data from the function now and the data variable will get the count data. Ross info will act an printf function to show those on the terminal. Then we publish the message and the data that we put into the message will be sent to somewhere. Here we now see about the subscriber node. What's going on here is the same as what we saw in the publisher. So let's look at the source code. The thing becomes special here is a message callback function. When this function gets a call, it will get a message and have the data sent from the publisher. Here we have also almost the same as we touch in the publisher side. But the different thing is the subscriber declaration. The subscriber instance will pass the message, comes from ROS tutorial message topic to the message callback function so the function gets in action. 
So we have prepared all the things to see how the nodes will run. Go to the Kekin workspace folder and do Kekin make. Then it compiles the sources, build the ROS executable files. Let's run the publisher node by following command. Then your terminal will show the messages published by the topic publisher node. Now you can do speedy check of the topic messages by echoing the topic. Next, let's subscribe the topic message by running the subscriber node. Then the terminal will show the data that is received from the publisher. At this moment, don't terminate those nodes and see the connection between the nodes. The RQT graph will show then the topic publisher node sends something to the topic subscriber node through ROS tutorial message topic. Until now, we saw how to make simple nodes and make them communicate with topic message. We made the package with our hands, but actually we have the source codes already in the GitHub. Since you know that you don't need to follow the previous talks, just do the following to run the nodes for topic communication. The next is the service communication. Service communication can be done between the service server, which responds only when there is a request, and the service client, which requests and gets response. We learned already about this, so skip the description and let's make and run the nodes. Now we start making new package for service communication. But let's skip the step of how to make the packages. Here, the only difference between the topic communication in the CMake lists is that there is a line of add service files instead of add message files. Let's skip here. And here, now we need to make extra service message file for this tutorial. Make the service folder and gedit to make the service message file. This uses also the standardized message format, the integer 64 bit. The difference between the topic message and the message format is the delimiter and those variables divide into two sides. This time, A and B is a variable for request, and the result variable is for response. From now, let's make a service server node. The service server needs to wait the request message, so there is something like callback function. The calculation function gets the request message and does the summation of two values come from the request message. So the service server reacts when a request comes in the ROS tutorial service. Now what we are going to see is the client side. The node initializes the name as service client, then gets two numbers for the calculation. If there is a proper input, it sends the request through the ROS tutorial service. And then, this part shows the value given by the server side. After making the package, let's build it. And run the nodes. The server side needs to be run before the client runs. When the service server node is successfully executed, it will wait for a service request. Run the service client nodes with two input values then the service server will calculate with them and will send the result. But unfortunately, service is an on-time communication, so the RQT graph can't track the communication. On the other hand, if we had a ROS topic echo in the topic communication, now we have ROS service call in the service communication. We can use it for sending the request to the service server. So you don't need to make extra service clients if you are going to use it only for checking the communication. 
You can otherwise use the RPT plugin and use a service call. As a matter of fact, there is no nodes that can do only publish or subscribe or act as service server or client. You can put the subscribers publishers in the one node and also with the service server and client. You can also get the source codes that we made instantly. If you need to refer to these codes for making another nodes, just download them. And now, here we have one more interesting system in the ROS. What we are going to make is the service server node, which calculates something with two input numbers. But the point is that the service server changes the mode of the calculation by getting the input even during it runs. It defines the plus, minus, multiply, and divide as from 1 to 4. So the node will switch the mode by following the parameter. And then this will show the result of calculation, sending the result back to client side. But all the ROS parameters should be initialized to be used further. And here sets the value by the set parent function. In the while loop, it dynamically gets the parameter value so the user can access into the node process. Let's build a source and run the node. Then list up the ROS parameter. Here we can access to the calculation mode via calculation method parameter. So while the service server runs, change the calculation mode and send two numbers. You can get these sources also from the GitHub. The last is the ROS launch. We already have made few kinds of nodes and tested its functionalities. But imagine that you have to run hundreds of nodes at specific time for the research purpose. You should execute and terminate them all the time all by your hands. And so it is an annoying task. Now you can put all the nodes, all the parameters you've used by testing those nodes into the specific executable file so that you can run all of them by running this. This executable file is the ROS launch file. Let's make a folder called launch in the ROS tutorial topic package and gedit a launch file. The launch file is made up with XML format. Put all the nodes that you want to run at the same time into the launch tag. In this tutorial, we are going to run two publisher nodes and two subscriber nodes. Then launch the launch file with following command. And check the ROS node list. If the launch file launched the node successfully, the list should show the names of two publisher nodes and two subscriber nodes. And now we'll catch a problem in this situation. Those nodes are running with same node but in different node name. So they must be sending and receiving the same topic message. Then how can we divide them into two channels without making extra nodes or modifying the source codes? To avoid the happened, there are namespace system in ROS. Let's modify the launch file once again by binding each pair of nodes in each namespace. And if you run the modify launch file, you can get the following result. Actually, there are many kinds of tags available in the launch file. And almost of them are necessary during your robot application development. So check this out. The whole source codes are fully open through the GitHub. Please use and modify the codes for your use.